Hey everybody, and welcome to our month episode. As per usual, my name is Justin. And I'm Joe. And I'm Dan. <laughs> and this time, it's it's our, or in, in some instances, the Halloween episode. Dan was ever so nice enough to give us the uh, horror comedy Beetlejuice. I went the more indie route with uh, Splinter, and Joe gave us the creature feature with questionable lighting, The Relic. <laughs> And our listener's choice. And of course, we can't forget our listener's choice, the Alfred Hitchcock classic, Psycho. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, I was first uh, this time around, and it was Beetlejuice, or Betelgeist, as it is uh, spelled out Mm -hmm. in, uh, and I think that's what the star is called, yes? Yes, Betelgeist. Betelgeist, right? Betelgeist, yes. Yes. The star. So anyway, this is uh, the 1988 fantasy horror comedy directed by Tim Burton, and uh, I did not write a synopsis for this movie, uh, as one is not needed. Uh, I've seen this movie easily 30 times. This is one that was on in my house growing up all the time. This is, you know, this and Back to the Future were, were two of the real staples. Um, so in this movie, Alec Baldwin and Gene Davis play a, a fairly newly married couple that uh, die in one of the opening scenes going off of a bridge. And uh, soon... They realize that they are dead, in fact, uh, but they're still living in their house. Uh, So they are trying to sort of figure out what that means. And as they're doing so, the Dietzes move in, played by uh, Principal Rooney himself, Jeffrey Jones, Catherine O'Hara, and their daughter, Lydia, the very goth girl played by Winona Ryder in uh, really, I would say, her first big role. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong on that, but certainly the first time I ever really saw her or anything it's basically her first book yeah i mean yeah. pretty much the yeah. one the one people would uh, would recognize her for um so uh, and michael keaton of course plays beetlejuice who um <laughs> who believe it or not do you know who was supposed to play beetlejuice oh, by the way that tim, that tim burton wanted oh no sammy davis jr what? i mean would have been very different all movie. right but a very very different movie um he actually had never heard of michael keaton when uh <laughs> The studio suggested it. He saw, I don't know if he saw Mr. Mom or what he watched, but he was like, okay, yeah, you guys are right. (laughs) Keaton Keaton it is. He's our man. Um, And and really, I mean, this is one of his defining roles. This and Batman are probably the two defining Keaton roles, and maybe now Birdman, but certainly for for decades. Um, This movie is hilarious. Uh, it's, you know, not really scary. I mean, is it a quote-unquote horror movie? No, I sort of went outside the box a little bit on this one. But as my my horror cred is not quite up to par with you gentlemen, I figured I would run a little bit, something a little bit more, uh, you know, off the beaten path. Hey, the sandworms are creepy. Um, the sandworms are creepy. I mean, there, there's, you know, where, where he becomes the, uh, the banister and starts, you know, shaking people. Hello. There's a couple of scenes, you know, for a PG movie. I think if you were a kid, you'd be yeah, scared I was going to say, there's, yeah. there's jump scares. For yeah, I was 11 audience. when this came out. So, I mean, you know, there's definitely a few things that are a little spooky. Um, but I think, you know, people identify with it most as a comedy. And I think they probably should. The the script here is great. There's there's really really broad jokes. You know the, the Deo gag, for example, where they're all singing Deo because they're possessed. Uh, you know, to the very like you know quiet jokes. So I think there's there's a lot of things that you pick up. You know, the more you watch this movie, Keaton's fantastic. Uh, Gina Davis, I I would say this is probably her best role. I'd say for me it is. Uh, so it, it's just a great movie. Uh, I give it an A. Justin. Okay. It's not Gail Gailey? As a uh, hero? Is this great performances? Well, uh, you know, uh, for hey. a hero fan, I will admit uh, she is good. And she's good as the president and, uh, you know, commander-in-chief. Mm. But I, I would say this is my favorite. Okay. Yeah. And I actually have to agree. Um I make a Stuart Little reference here, but I feel like that'd be, uh, fall on deaf ears. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it, it certainly isn't going to accidental tourist, but I, Ooh, I think True. It's... <laughs> hey, she was pretty good in that. She though. won the award for it, so. <laughs> All right. She, she did. Getting serious now. Getting serious. So when I uh, when I started my, my college years, a colleague of mine described this to me at the time as a quote-unquote dark comedy with a heart of gold. And I really can't argue with that, with that, uh, quick synopsis part of the reason i think is because this is a movie that's so 
very much a product of the, of the 80s. I think in 2016, this the sheer concept of this idea would have never made it past the pitch. Hmm. Hmm. But I think with Burton's vision being what it being what it was, censorship obviously not being as frankly crazy as it is today. There's really a lot of personality here, and I think a lot of the jokes, while while seemingly innocent, are also very very risque and playful at the same time. And I think it's it, well, it goes to a whorehouse. I mean, that's not right. <laughs> right. Very subtle. <laughs> no, but I I think it finds a very nice balance between being kid friendly enough, but adults can enjoy it too. Hmm. Um, Burton is really really illustrates the talent that he that I think. He used to be known for and now kind of needs to reflect. Yeah, more. movies in that like four year window really solidified the the Burton, you know, the quote unquote feeling, Burton yeah. feeling. You know, you had big uh, or not big top Pee Wee, the other Pee Wee movie. Pee-wee's big adventure. Um yeah. and then you had this, Batman and Scissor Hands. Naturally. You know, all sort of in, in a like four or five year period. You know, when you think of a Burton movie, you don't think <clears throat> about big eyes or Ed Wood or, you know, a lot of the other things you you think the Burton look is this? It's the uh, and Alfman, of course, you know, with the score helps. Golden age of Burton. This it absolutely was the golden age of Burton. Oh yeah, <laughs> unquestionably. Oh yeah. And then came Hot Topic, but no. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, true. Sorry, sorry. Um, but no, I think I think there's a lot of personality to this movie. There are times where I wonder how dark is too dark, and there's certainly a lot going on. Some of which gets callbacks, obviously. But others just kind of get left by the wayside and never really get resolved or focus on. Like, The Sandworms, funny plot point, ties into the climax, kind of, but never really goes anywhere and just makes you, just makes you want to ask more questions. It's, it's a big universe, and obviously there's only so much you can cover in, in an hour, 40-minute movie. That's why they did the cartoon. <laughs> it's true. Certainly. Right. But uh, as, as a whole, and obviously for early Burton... Very well done. Very original. There's a lot to like about it. And just the right kind of spooky. I leave with an A-. minus. Well, first of all, I'm shocked that you didn't watch this growing up. I mean, this seems like one of those movies like uh, Goonies or, you know, like everybody watches Beetlejuice when they're a kid. Um, but the other thing is, I, I don't know if I agree that this movie would not be made today. I think of all the 80s movies that we've seen since we started doing, you know, old classics on this show, I, this is one that... Uh, does not seem that inherently eighties to me. I think, I think if it did get made, it would be ridiculously, and I do mean it when I say ridiculously toned down. Well, it wouldn't be a PG movie if they made it today. <laughs> well, but, not, but you know no. what? Look at Goosebumps. That mm-hmm. had some some scary moments. They didn't drop f bombs or go to whorehouses, but <laughs> this this movie could be, certainly be made as a PG thirteen today. Also, bear in mind nobody straight up died in Goosebumps either, but. But once again, Goosebumps toned down from the books. But toned down from the books, yeah, as you guys mentioned. Dramatically, yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't know that this couldn't be made today. Uh, Joe, what are your thoughts on Beetlejuice? Well, if it were made today, it would still have to be made with Michael Keaton. Well, they keep talking about about the second one, you know. Everybody seems to be on board, so. I mean, you know, Beetlejuice is great. Uh, definitely one that I saw as a kid, but didn't watch as much, mm. for sure. I think that it doesn't feel particularly dated. I think everybody is good in it. There's some good comedy for a lot of different people. A lot of different audiences could find different jokes that they could enjoy. Mm-hmm. But the whole thing is kind of cohesive. It's an interesting world. And visually, of course, it's Burton. And, I mean, it's just really great for makeup and stop-motion effects. Yeah, like practical it won effects. the Oscar for makeup. You know, Well, it should have, because you know, they did Rightfully a great, so, yeah. great mm-hmm. job. And that's always a plus for me. And, you know, Michael Keaton, of course, is great, as is everyone else. I think that the only real negative I could think of of the movie is that because it's a little bit shorter than it could be, we don't get to expand as much as we could. And I also feel like, even though Beetlejuice is the star of the movie, it isn't really about him. Yes, and we don't see him for a while. And then it happens, and he becomes a big plot point, and then he's basically gone. Yeah. I feel like they could have probably added some more time to flesh him out a bit more. But other than that, I think it's quite enjoyable. I could definitely use some more Beetlejuice. I definitely could use Naturally, more yeah. of him in his own movie. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, what would your grade be for Beetlejuice? My grade would be an A. Oh, all right. Yeah, what what a grade. Well, it's not the best grade. No, but, but you know, uh, but I also did not get an A+. Plus. Why not? Um, partially because Keaton's not in it as much. He's the really the highlight of the film, I yeah. would say. 
But that's about it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, mean, I, I think no. really everything's done pretty well. It is. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Justin, your pick was Splinter. It was. It was. After a romantic getaway goes horribly wrong thanks to an unstable couple on the run, Seth and Polly, played by Paolo Costanzo and Jill Wagner, most commonly famous for being a co-host on the game show Wipeout, find themselves holed up in a seemingly abandoned gas station. The group gradually discovers they're under attack by a parasite that can infect and possess in the form of splinters, and a battle for survival slowly unfolds. There's a lot of horror films out there, many of which are bad. But I think to find the good stuff, or at least the really underrated stuff, you have to keep an open mind, and you gotta, you gotta be willing to look up, look around. And if you're an Animorphs fan, it helps too. <laughs> and if you're an Animal fan, more say it's absolutely <laughs> Animorphs. Uh, okay, too uh, long. Yeah, right. too long. Wait, wait All too right. long. I'll look uh, it up. Someone will get it. But That's yes, uh, yes, yeah, the one person was from Animorphs. But anyways, yes, yes. Uh, admittedly, I think with I've always sort of had a soft spot with for creature features. I'm sure some of our listeners listened to uh, There Goes Tokyo with. Joe and I, when we discussed Godzilla movies, mm-hmm. um, what I like about this one is not only is it a creature feature, but it has a, a fairly a fairly original creature that uh, builds upon and expands in really creepy and surprisingly playful ways, but also kind of interjects some degree of logic. Not all of it works, but it's nice to see a horror film actually like put some put some rationale and like justification behind the the actions don't get me wrong there's still very very dumb mistakes and one arguably unintentionally bad line but that uh that comes later on in the movie but i think at roughly 80 minutes it moves there's enough scares to keep it lively and i think for uh for a quick easy horror ride it's pretty thrilling i live with a b plus mm, joseph well it's definitely original I gotta say, the, the look was original, and uh, it looked very crisp and clean for, I assume, was a very low-budget movie. I would and, say so. You know, it had uh, an Animorphs character <laughs> oh, my. Get, getting getting a role after Animorphs, which I was like, oh, wow, he's still working. <laughs> Not just Iceman, folks, but... <laughs> Not just Iceman. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but that's Jake Goodwin. But, yeah, I have to say, the monster was cool, kind of a take on the zombie story, but with a little bit more of a unique twist, uh, cool visuals with that. There's some good gore. Uh, there's some good scares. Uh, there's also some silly moments. It can be kind of hammy at times. Um, I think that maybe the characters could have been a little better defined in some aspects, but they do go through arcs. There is some growth. Uh, overall, it was enjoyable, but it was made even better by the discount KFMDM song at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which, which we thought was. For a second, I was like, wow. Yeah, I really kind of thought it was KFMDM, and then it was not. But yeah, no, I, I'm actually with you, Justin. That was a B plus. I thought it was pretty good. Um, well, you guys know I, I like these more contained stories, you know, like a green room. I mean, here there's there's really only two locations in the whole movie. You know, there's sort of the, the outdoors part at the beginning. Yep. And then, station, I mean, they move station. they move a little bit on the road, I guess. But still, you know, yeah. that's its own location. And then the gas station for like an hour. Um, and, you know, I think the, the main plot slash, you know creature whatever you want to call it is is not something new to horror certainly but it, this film does follow its own rules which i can't always say and for the most part people's decisions usually make some sort of sense um i mean they sort of get more or less questionable i should say as the thing goes on in the beginning they're just like oh yeah hop on in you know <laughs> Never mind that you seem a little off. It's but. like, yeah, like, they're, you Good know, they're, well, they're kind of dummies, but <laughs> as it goes on, they sort of use their wits a, a little bit more. Um, the acting's all right. I don't know any of these people. I don't watch Wipeout or Animorphs. <laughs> um, but, you know, well, they were okay for, you know, what the role required. The the woman that played the police officer was good as well in her scene. Um, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> before she gets murdered. But, uh, yeah, you know, I thought it was pretty decent. I- I'm with you guys. I give it a B plus. Yeah. Okay, so definitely not Holland Part 2. All right. Mr. Holland's opus was, was too like... Long. It was too long. 
was too long. The errors weren't right. There were so many problems with that and, dumb movie. And it was also about but his son, but it wasn't really. It wasn't at all. <laughs> it wasn't at all. You think Beetlejuice wasn't a Beetlejuice it's very like, much? It's like it was like two hours, and then right, by yeah. the way, anyway, he does you brought it up. Dumb, I, I did. <laughs> that I was myself. that's on you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, no. But no, this this was good. I I never heard of it before. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, Joe brought us. The Relic. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I brought them The Relic, which is a relic from 1990s <laughs> horror. <laughs> uh, basically, relic even then, folks. But <laughs> basically, basically, uh, it follows... It is kind of a creature feature. And uh, we get Tom Sizemore as a, as a cop who's investigating a series of strange murders that are occurring when a crate is shipped over from, I believe it's South America, and a new creature might be evolving and moving around within a museum and people become trapped inside, and it's a desperate mm. attempt to not die as this giant thing, whatever it may be, kills them. And that's the relic. Yeah. Now, uh, I picked the relic because I didn't want to pick something more generic from the Netflix queue. And I'm like, all right, well, I remember liking the relic when I saw it many years ago. Uh, so, <laughs> Once yeah. upon a time. So I'll bring it because they, uh, they liked Mimic, and Relic and Mimic are very similar movies in, in, in a lot of ways. Uh and so subway museum subway museum uh the same time period same time 97 <laughs> yeah you know like you ironically know, makes sense yes. uh, okay so some things that i do like about this movie uh i think the main reason it stuck with me for so long is because i really like the monster i really think the monster is cool i think the whole dna manipulation thing kind of similar to mimic is something i guess interests me plus essentially it's a big lizard can't go wrong with a big lizard for me uh i think that there is some tension there is uh, there are a couple scares. Some of the gore is good when it happens. Like, they, things... There's a lot of decapitations in this movie. Like, they were kind of all over the place. Uh, and I think it was funny going into this. I remember Dan groaning because Tom Sizemore's best days are behind him. He thought that Tom Sizemore was going to, like, be terrible. But ironically, he's probably, like, one of the better actors and better characters in the movie. That's not yeah. a complete moron i mean i guess in 97 his best days were not behind him almost i i really oh, he, he's getting there he had to do after uh, private ryan that was it no paparazzi <laughs> oh i know oh, clearly paparazzi. joe clearly hey he was a good villain <laughs> in paparazzi it. oh it's terrible okay but but he, <laughs> definitely i can't serious. imagine why joe please <laughs> okay. but anyway um, so yeah there's that uh, i believe it's is it penelope ann miller was that? yeah, was, yeah. Was, love yeah, her i like her she was good too yeah. uh so you, you and of course you got Lindell hunt legendary as the museum curator person that runs it and so there there are some good actors uh, there's some good tension some good ideas a few scares there's also a lot of bad acting uh, there's also a lot of incredibly dumb decisions uh, like it's like even even from our, our lead scientist lady who knows what's going on but doesn't choose to tell them until the <laughs> yes, monster's literally knocking never. at the steel door you know as a couple examples uh you've got uh, some of the gore which is you know scary other times it's laughable and you know <laughs> Often one, one right after the other. <laughs> often, right, so it's a, often a barrage of different things and a lot of stupid decisions. But perhaps most legendary, um, it might be one of the worst lit movies ever produced. Mm -hmm. Like the, he admits it. I, I admit it because I didn't think it was that bad when I saw it so many years ago. And I do think that, in all honesty, sometimes it does work, and I will stand by that. When they're down in a subway where there are no lights and there's something moving around, I can live with that. The problem is, even when it's outside in the middle of the day. It still looks dark mm -hmm. in some yes. shots. So yes, there there is some bad lighting, some really bad lighting. Sometimes purposeful, maybe a lot of times not. So this one for me uh, was not as good as I thought it was. But there are some things I do enjoy. But overall, though, I, I think that it's more of a guilty pleasure than anything else. I, I found I found this one I would to be say so. I found this one to be fun to watch, even though a lot of things were kind of silly. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. It's passed because of that. I leave with the D plus actually. Okay, Justin. The, so the by C the way, role, the, the lowest. Well, but he said he thought he remembered liking it. Okay, that's what I was just gonna say. You yeah, know, I, saw, okay, I, saw, way, I saw the movie like fifteen yes, years ago. <laughs> you know, uh, this is this is the first time that we've ever had a, oh, a I, negative grade from the person I, that brought it. But you know, Joe's being honest. He remembered liking it. Yeah, you know, no, no I can accept that. So that's, that's right. Perfect just, justification yeah. is there. Uh. <laughs> huh. Justin's favorite lighting. I know that for sure. Oh yeah, so. Listeners may know uh, Joe and I's Discussion. debacle from uh, Amazing Spider-Man and arguably God's Pocket. Yes, it's getting referenced every season, folks. But 
Oh God! The, Are you uh, bringing up the the legendary arguments tonight? But, Why? Why would you do that? But the other one that has often been thrown around off show, off show, ha- has really been the relic. So I feel like this review was only a matter of time in that regard. I guess so. <laughs> he was like nice though in God's pocket. Can we can we just agree on that? He was like a good dude. We're not getting into it. Look, look. In all fairness, though, God's pocket does have one of my favorite quotes. Is that right? Did you even watch this movie? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I fired that it back is, at you several that times. That is but, true. I know. I know. It, it, is, is, but, uh, it is. But no. <laughs> and ironically enough, a lot of it is due to the lighting. But yeah. admittedly, as I mentioned with my Splinter review, I do kind of have a soft spot for creature features. This is one I I watched uh, sort of when I was like killing time one day. And obviously I didn't think it was a good it was a particularly great movie, but there's there's things I liked about it, and certainly the creature is one of them. Though I would say between Mimic and the Relic, I'd probably give Mimic the advantage. Well, and to speak to that point, you know, the Mimic had sequels; this one did not. Yeah, Mimic is a better film than this for sure. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> yeah, is. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think there's a line to be drawn between artistic storytelling and what I referred to many times while, while we were watching it: directorial incompetence. Ooh. And Ooh. when we're missing big key moments and action because the director didn't know how to set up right lighting or r- how to hit the right scene that we can tell what's going on, that's not art. That's not artistic storytelling. That's you not knowing what you're doing. Just one and, day, and just, admittedly, <laughs> you're just gonna run into one of these directors. It's gonna hear that film fanatics podcast. He's like, you know what? <laughs> you thought that I was incompetent. Huh? Yeah, I, I just I'm just waiting. It's a strong word though. Keep going. It's fine. I, I, I feel like the uh, mm. the director of Time Cop is not going to be banging on my door, but... You never know, man. I ship these to Greengrass every week. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he Nothing would make me happier he, he if I got a, a hate he, message he, from Paul Greengrass. see, like, doing, like, the, the sideshow Bob, like, <laughs> yeah. blood, blood. Yeah. <laughs> He gets a CG Kill of Miller. the show every week. So you were. Oh, no, no, no. I... I would consider it best day ever if I got a hate message from Paul Greengrass. Oh, man. But no, I think I think the buildup is reasonably nice. I think some of the acting at times is okay. At other times, it's hokey, but in a kind of guilty pleasure kind of way. Like, I don't want to call it bad because I'm still, I'm still entertained by it, at least. I don't know, man. That one cop. Oh, the cop was horrible. What, well, he was, what is happening? He, he was so bad, he was good. <laughs> this, no, this is a problem. There is something wrong. He's not incorrect. He's not. Yeah, he's, no. no, he's actually fairly practical. It's just none obvious of what's man. It's like it's yes. like there's like a giant Captain like, Obvious, literally yeah. like, torn apart like into a thousand pieces. You know, I think there's something. Yeah, wrong. I think there's something not right here. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess my main point is, this is a this is definitely a guilty pleasure creature feature that I think really could have been good if they had spent more time on it. It's just. They did a lot with the creature when we finally saw it, and the rest of it is just generic by the numbers horror film. For me, I'd probably leave it with a C plus. Wow, C plus. So much love from the <laughs> the angry, angry feud of the relic. Incompetent. Wow, an incompetent C plus. All right, well, whatever. I can appreciate uh, some guilty pleasure quality. Hmm. Okay. I thought it was dumb, but uh, but I agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I can't really deny what either of you said. I mean, I think I, I sort of fall in between you guys on the darkness issue. Joe, I do think there's a, a few spots where it, works, it right? works and makes sense that it's dark. But it's all the time. Um, in the museum at the uh, the ball? <laughs> no. Not really. <laughs> Um, but is, yeah. What about some of the lines? Like, is he speaking English? Yes. He literally said... A some of the lines thing. are are bad. I did <laughs> really like bad. when they asked if he was speaking English. Because <laughs> um, I certainly had a comment about that while we were watching it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, you've got some good actors here. I, Linda Hunt is always a classic. Um, you know, Sizemore does all right. Yeah. You know. Um, I, I do think Mimic is the better film for sure. Um, the, the Darkness is... Uh, an issue. Um, I I do like to know what's happening in the movie, <laughs> and, and I didn't just throwing it out there. I didn't a lot of times, and you know, and sometimes I don't know what's happening in a movie because the script is terrible, or the 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 characters aren't making any sense, or you know, there's plot holes aplenty. plenty. This had like a little bit of that, 
but more it was that I didn't really know what was happening half the time, <laughs> um, which sometimes worked and sometimes was just frustrating and you could tell that that was not purposeful. Um, so grade-wise, I'm, I'm in between you guys, C-. minus. I could see guilty pleasure moments in it, um, but it wasn't very good. No. No. Uh, all right, well, Justin Psycho. All right. This is up. our, yeah, this is our listener's choice. What we decided for this month was to kind of pick uh, the, you know, six or so most famous horror directors and uh, pick one of their films and, and put it up to the poll uh, for you listeners. And uh, you guys picked the Hitchcock choice, of course, uh, which was Psycho. Yeah, still sad that Frankenstein got no love, but what can you do? Yeah. Look, man. <laughs> well, that wasn't a, you know, maybe because that wasn't a, a director-specific one. I mean, that, that was could just, have been. You, that was the only one that was sort of like mm-hmm. under the Universal Monsters umbrella. Yeah. So who knows? Uh, well, for any of our listeners who don't know the story up to this point, I assume that number's slowly but certainly dwindling. <laughs> Few people. Anthony Perkins plays the iconic Norman Bates. Great guy. A reserved proprietor of a hotel with shall we say, for the sake of avoiding spoilers, mommy issues. Spoilers. Oh, my goodness. Hey, somebody could be listening to this who has never seen it. I gotta be nice. Though when a violent murder uh, takes takes place at the hotel, the victim's sister, played by Vera Miles, begins an investigation to discover the shocking truth about the crime. So this is one of those movies that is truly considered one of the greatest of all time, and... To be perfectly honest, I think it lives up to its title. It's a movie that I think the first time around is absolutely terrifying. And then you go back to it several times after, and it still maintains that chill factor. And I think that's partially because you can appreciate more of Hitchcock's styling with use of uh, the Zolly effect, with uh, close-ups, focusing on certain aspects, the way he chooses chooses to cut to still illustrate tension, the and also to to show really how ahead of its time it, it was and in some cases arguably still is. Uh, acting is fantastic. Anthony Perkins is incredible in this movie. Managing to give doubt but also still pose big big ideas with the with the final reveal. And I mean the the tension only continues to get going. It's truly a movie that's to be frank, as far as hard thriller go hard thrillers go, excuse me. Just about perfect in every way. I would leave this one with an A plus easily. Third time through for me. Um, I, I don't think it's still ahead of its time, but it was certainly ahead of its time sixty years ago. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, I mean, th- this is a a chilling movie. I I don't know if it's necessarily a scary movie per se, um, but it's such an iconic movie that you sort of know everything that's going to happen in it just by, you know, being alive in the world and hearing things, you know. Yeah. It's, you don't have to ever have seen Titanic to know that Jack dies. Um, I mean, obviously, wrong. you know, Who? you know the boat sinks, obviously, but, yes. hey, wait, you know. Wait, wait, but, no, no, no. What, what, <laughs> what happened? Titanic? He's dead. Jim. No. <laughs> yeah. No, no, they share the rat. The little, the little Inception crack. crossover. No. Okay. See, he, he made, he he said, he made so many movies out of it. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, in that respect, I, I can't say that I've ever really been scared by this movie, but it is chilling. Certainly the the uh, people in 1960 seeing it running from the theater, you know, I get it. Um, and I think the, the movie Hitchcock is a great companion piece. If you've seen this one, you know, a number of times and you sort of want to know a, a little background um, on, on the making of it and everything, I think... Uh, you know, it's a good companion piece because it really is not only about this movie, but how it came together. I mean, mm-hmm. it really... Oh, absolutely. You know, he, he fought with the ratings board for a lot of things and, um, you know, this and that. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's, I mean, nothing much I can say about it. It's an A+. Hmm. Well, I'm going to say... What a hater. To, to, <laughs> Mr., to Mr. Hitchcock, you know, the uh, greatest uh, filmmaker of all time. What are you going to say to Hitch, Joe? You know, Hitch... Is that, you know, that Vince Vaughn version, though, man. Joe does like the, I, the I, Vince Vaughn I, version. I, I kind of enjoy he it. He stands I, I by guess it. somebody has to. You know, but you know I, I admit, I, I don't really have a problem with that. You know, you Gus do, Van Sam would be proud. But look, man, you, you do the exact same movie in color. 
modernize them a little bit. You throw in some Vaughn. Yeah. Throw in some Vaughn for some laughs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, well, really, I mean, it's Psycho. You know, what, what can you really say about yeah. it? The uh, first time I saw this movie, I thought it was brilliant. Second time I saw this movie now, eh, didn't have quite the same effect on me. I think that the concept is definitely ahead of its time. This movie was very dark in that sense, and of course, pushing the elements of gore and some of the themes. Oh, yeah. I mean, Anthony Perkins, of course, this really complex villain and tackling this dark side of psychosis. It's really cool, and Norman Bates is one of those like really fascinating characters. It really, it is. And like, once we get to that, the, the pinnacle scenes with him, it is great. Everything up to that... Some build-up's good, but I didn't really care too much about the characters when certain Ch- things happened to okay. them. And, and th- there was a little bit of a lengthy build-up there. I can't say I was always entertained. True. But other than that, I think it's a great movie. Mm. I leave it with an A. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I think it's saying. I think it justifies the setup. Like, it's I mean, not racing to the next big scale. In, in 1960, yes. I yeah, think that, I mean, that, for the time period, sure. You know, but, like, I will admit... It's they got have, a slow they have, The theme comes up, and you're like, okay, she's doing stuff, and there's some tension... And then some more stuff happens, and then the theme goes away. It pulls Wes Craven. It pulls Wes Craven, you know. And it, well, it's like, it's not bad, but I'm just kind of like, the movie really gets much better once she gets to the motel. Oh, yeah. You know, Certainly. Before that, it's just kind of like, it's all right. Drama. No, you're not sure if she's a whore or not, either. Mistress. She's a mistress. In that beginning. Which is, you know, to some degree a whore, mm. from some people's perspective, perhaps. Yeah. No money Depending involved. Depending on who you talk to. Though, if he likes to take care of his mistress, maybe there I is mean, some right, money we, involved. We don't I, know. I don't know. But my point is... That might have affected it a little bit, mm-hmm. how much I really cared about the initial victim. If she's yeah. a victim, you know, no one knows what happens in Psycho. Um, I, I think, you know, if you can if you can get, you know, the iconic image from an entire genre of... I mean, the, 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 her scream, in you know, in the shower, I think is the most iconic image in horror film history. It's certainly up there. I mean, you, you certainly know... Villains, maybe more than that. Freddy Krueger, of course. So you know, like My- Michael Myers, whatever. Hmm. You know, but in terms of like one image, I just I can't think of anything in horror that's more iconic than that. Hmm. Joe's thinking. I, I am thinking actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can only think of one off the bat, which would be even close. What's, What's that? that? Yeah. Chestburster, like- Aliens, pretty pretty iconic. That is true. It's the only one I could think yeah, of that, that, that was like that's on, true. on that level of just. Like I you, yeah, you, I don't know if it's if you, it's quite to this level, but that is a pretty pretty good. Uh, now it's a worthy comparison. Picture as well, yeah. Something that's more iconic than that, though. Um, I mean, if we're going like sequences, you could always argue. No, I'm not going oh. sequences. I'm not saying yeah, sequences. No, 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 no. Just I, I uh, just a frame. I don't know. Yeah, I, maybe not. It might be it. Might might be. Except for like you know, Bella Goosey. Saying, I'm yeah, Dracula, I mean, maybe you know. maybe uh, one of the one of the classic Universal monsters, either maybe. Dracula, or Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. It's alive. Yeah, it's maybe, alive. Yeah. True, might have a beat. True, but again, that's a, that's more of a sequence than I think of one what like image. one still image. That's true. Right. So, anyway, great movie. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good choice, but... listeners. Yet again. Uh, so, uh, for November, we decided to do in memoriam month. Uh, the year's almost over. We've lost a lot of. Very, very great actors and actresses. Um, so we'll be putting up a, a poll in a couple of weeks for uh, your choices for that. And then uh, I guess we're going to do Christmas again, right? Yeah. Because you want to so, yeah. run the Santa Claus. Sure. <laughs> T- Tim Allen month. I mean, you know, we we got to get it going <laughs> here. Uh, so, all right. Well, thank you, uh, listeners, for uh, checking out the show. You can check out our weekly uh, new film episodes uh, up all the time and of course the Star Trek minisodes as well and you can subscribe to us here on YouTube or check us out on Facebook Film Fanatics with an exclamation point the Twitter feed at Film Fanatics Pod thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time